Hello, friends. Thank you for joining us today. Pastor Justin Randolph, pastor at Zion Hill Baptist Church in Sevierville, Tennessee. Today, we are doing a devotional from the book of Genesis. Uh, in the book of Genesis, we've so far talked about the, a little about the creation. Uh, we've talked about the sin, the fall of man, and we've also talked a little about Cain and Abel. We finished talking about uh, Kay, uh, Cain's grandson, Lamech. Uh, now, Cain's grandson, uh, Lamech, had uh, increased in wickedness from his grandfather, Cain. He was bragging about uh, how he had killed a man for doing something to him, uh, uh, not deserving that that. Uh, offense, that kind of, a, for a much lesser offense, I should say, and also for his, uh, to his wives, uh, who he took multiple wives, and just uh, about his wickedness in general. And we read in chapter 6 and uh, verse uh, uh, 5 that, that the Lord saw uh, that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent on the thoughts of his heart were evil, on evil continually. Uh, and so he was grieved that he made man. Uh, we know one thing about sin my friend, and with sin multiplies and destroys. Uh, you can't uh, just do a little sin. Uh, you become ensnared and entrapped by it. It's much like quicksand. The more you struggle with it, the deeper it gets, and it seemingly you cannot help yourself. Neither can man help you. Psalms 108.12 says, Give us help for our troubles, for the help of man is useless. And so therefore sin uh, encapsulates you uh, in, in, uh, in, in such a way that you cannot ever hope to get out. Uh, but God's grace is greater than our sins. And the Bible says in, in uh, chapter 6, verse 8, that there was a man named Noah and that he found grace in the eyes of the Lord. The Bible des defines grace as unmerited favor, not, not getting what we deserve, but instead getting what we don't deserve. And certainly salvation is something we don't deserve. And Noah didn't deserve it, and you and I don't deserve it. But Noah got it uh, because God is a gracious God. And then man's responsibility is to trust God. In what God says. And God told Noah that he had found grace and, and God instructed Noah what he needed to do and Noah believed God. The Bible tells us in chapter 6 verse 9 that Noah was a just man, meaning he was genuine and authentic in what, who he was and what he believed. He was not a liar in his heart. He was who he was and he was fair. And the Bible says he was perfect in his generations. That doesn't mean he never sinned, but the desire of his heart was to be uh, a righteous. And so he was righteous because that was his desire. God saw that, and God uh, wanted to save him and help him. And the Bible says Noah walked with God. That's where he received his wisdom. That's where he received his power. And as a result of his desire to walk with God in righteousness, he received the grace of God. And God told him, and uh, what, let him in on what God was up to in verse 13. He said, The end of all flesh is at hand, and the earth will be filled, is filled with violence. And behold, I will destroy them from the earth. Make yourself an ark of go gopher wood. God also goes on to describe the ark uh, in much detail, and he instructs Noah on how to build it. Uh, we know that it took Noah 120 years to build this ark. No doubt this made a statement as he built this boat on dry land. This huge structure and inform the people. The people had to ask why where is he making and inform them and perhaps preach to them about sin and righteousness and judgment and, and encourage them to repent of their sins and to ask God for his grace and perhaps he would allow them to get in the ark. But you know, no one took uh, uh, Noah up on his offer outside of his wife, his three sons and their wives. And when the Bible says when it came time uh, in chapter 7 verse 1 that, uh, that uh, Noah uh, and his family got in the ark and the Lord shut the door and uh, there would be no one else to enter in. Uh, the Bible tells us in two different places, uh, 6.22 and 7.5, that Noah did according to all that God had told him to do. That, my friend, is man's responsibility. For over a lifetime of ours, 120 years, Noah did exactly what God told him to do, and as a result, he was saved. It's not what we do as far as our personal goodness, but it's what we do in regard to what God's told us to do. In this case, he told Noah to build the ark and to get in it. Noah believed God, and it was accounted to him as righteousness. Now the Bible tells us the flood was on the earth 40 days. The waters increased and lifted the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters prevailed and greatly increased on the earth, and the ark moved about on the surface of the waters, and all flesh died that moved on the earth, birds and cattle and beasts and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, and every man, all in whose nostrils was the breath of the spirit of life, all that was on dry land died. They were destroyed from the earth. This tells us, friends, that God's wrath against sin is without mercy. 
God's judgment is without mercy on sin, but yet God is patient and long-suffering, desiring that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. That, my friends, includes you and it includes me. God desires us to repent, to turn to him and to be saved. But God's uh, timing uh, uh, and, and God's holiness uh, dictates that there must be a time when we face the judgment for our sins. The Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die and at that time to face the judgment. My friends, we all will be judged for our sins and our wrongdoings. Don't mistake God's grace and God's meekness for weakness. God is not weak towards sin. All will be judged and held account for all their sinful deeds and behaviors. But my friends, grace is at the heart of God. God is a God of love. We love because he first loved us. God loves and God desires us to be saved. And so he, just like Noah, Noah the, the ark is a type of Christ. Uh, and so we see God's wrath on sin is without mercy. But we also see that only Noah and those who were went with him in the ark remained alive. In other words, there was a gracious plan of God. It was for whoever went inside the ark would be saved. Uh, the, you know, uh, if we are going to be saved, there's one way. And my friends, that's God's way. In Noah's time, it was whoever would enter the ark before God shut the door. Now in our day, it's whoever will enter in through the door, the gate, Jesus Christ, the one who died on the cross and rose again, who had ever believed and placed their faith and trust in him would be saved. My friends, there's not many ways to heaven. There's simply just one way to heaven, and that's God's way. And God's way is through Jesus Christ, his son. Jesus came, lived a perfect life that you and I could never live. He never had a sin nature. He never sinned. He was falsely accused and, and killed for a crime he never done. He went willingly to the cross because that was the only way through his sacrifice that you and I could be saved. He, through his sacrifice on the cross, through the shedding of his innocent blood, the Bible tells us that he has made atonement, propitiation for all our sins, past, present, and future. And when we place our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, all our sins are covered so that when God sees us, he credits us what Jesus has done. Don't, don't hold against us what we have done. My friends, that is glorious news, and that is the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The resurrection three days later shows us that Jesus is God's son. He was who he said he was, and he came to do what he said he was going to do. And God received and accepted his sacrifice. So now we can be set free from the prison of our sins. My friends, back in the Old Testament days, they didn't have iron bars and prisons like we have today, but they had cisterns, empty wells, and they'd throw you into the pit, much like Joseph, and there you would stay inside of that prison. My friends, there was no way out of that prison. But my friends, there is a way out of the prison of sin. Only one way out, and that's through Jesus Christ. He, he is the hand, the nail-scarred hand that we grab a hold to. Man's ways are useless. But my friends, if we'll trust in Christ today, we'll, we'll escape our prison of sin and instead become a prisoner of hope. God will give us strength for today, an abundant life today, a purpose in our life today, and God will give us eternal life, everlasting life in his heavenly kingdom. My friend, one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. But it's only those who bow knee now that will be rejoicing on that day. Those who are forced to bow a knee and admit Jesus on that day after, being, after dying in their sins will be forever separated from God in a place called hell. My friends, Jesus today says this to you today. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. My friends, will you accept Jesus by faith as your Lord and Savior today? Will you come inside the ark of Jesus Christ before God closes the door, before God floods the earth? before the end of time has come, either the end of days for you and me or the end of time itself. My friend, Jesus is coming soon. could be morning, night, or noon. And friends, only those who are prepared, only those who are ready will be saved. Are you ready today? Let me encourage you. Receive by faith Jesus Christ, your Savior and Lord. How do you do that? Just say a prayer like this one. Say, Dear Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I believe in you. I believe you died on the cross and rose again right now as best I know how. I'm choosing to place Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me of all my sins. Take me to heaven one day. Thank you for keeping your promise and saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, you pray that prayer and you become a new creation. You're no longer a prisoner of sin. You're a prisoner of hope. You have a wonderful hope in the future in God's heavenly kingdom. Thanks for sharing 10 minutes with me today. And I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope to come to you again real soon with another devotion from the book of Genesis. God bless you.